Rebecca and welcome to my channel. I have been doing something a little bit different and it's going to take a couple of days so you're probably going to see a couple of different outfits because um, this is day one and I am building a life-size Barbie book and it's really not all that time consuming but I'm crafting at work and I'm also doing it in between a lot of other things that I've got going on. So just a little bit of an explanation. Halloween is huge at the Medical Lodge's Neo Show. And usually around the week of July 4th, um, we post a theme for um, our Halloween because everybody likes to figure out what they're going to be and try to get their costumes together and we have the very best time, staff, residents, everybody and um, we kind of like to incorporate our party theme in with everything and plan such wonderful, it's, we just have, we have a great time at Halloween and we also like to incorporate our um, our party with the Neo Show Missouri Trail of Treats and all of the trick-or-treaters hit the local businesses around a certain span of time and the residents love to hand out candy and it's just it's a lot of fun and we really enjoy it so I had an idea and with the Barbie movie coming out I thought it would be a great theme this year to be um, to have a Barbie theme. Barbie is such an iconic figure. Um, young, old, a lot of people play with Barbies, um, and she had so many adventures, um, so many sports themes. Uh, there's holiday Barbies and occupations so there are so many Barbie themes to choose from but I thought it would be fun to see how many Barbies uh, we could come up with and so Barbie is our theme this year for Halloween and along with that I decided to build a life-size doll box so that everybody could get inside the box and take pictures and I'm also going to let the community Barbies come out and on the trail of treats and take their pictures in our life-size doll box. So I started crafting this life-size doll box and so I'm just trying to do this in amongst everything else that I've got going on. So that's why it's taking me a little bit longer if I just had one afternoon to just sit down and bang it out. I could do that but I, I I got a little bit, I got a little bit of stuff to do. So anyway, come craft with me and let me show you what I'm doing with this life-size life doll box because it is turning out to be so cute. I bought 10 sheets of ready board. You can purchase this foam board at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. You can buy your foam board at other stores, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Michaels, but I found that the foam board at the Dollar Tree works perfectly well. And so why pay more for something that works great? I hot glued my ends together and then I ran a bead of hot glue down the seam to make sure it was nice and secure. I'm going to put three together to make the side panels for my Barbie box and this is going to give me the height that I want. You can make yours whatever size that you want. I just want to make sure that this has a really good height. From a child to an adult to an average height woman with high heels, I want anyone and everyone to be able to stand in this Barbie doll box and be comfortable so I put 
three of these foam board sheets together. They are 20 by 30. So that gave me the height that I needed for my foam board. Once I had my glue dried, I secured, just for a little added security, I put tape around the seam. It would be better if you used clear packing tape, which you can buy at the Dollar Tree. I had masking tape on hand because I was crafting at work and my packing tape was at home and I get my crafting supplies all strung out between the two places and so I was crafting with what I had on hand and that was masking tape which I also buy at the Dollar Tree. Like I said the foam board is 20 by 30 inches so on the 20 inch side of the panel I measured 10 inches right straight in the middle and I made a little mark on the top of the foam board and on the bottom of the foam board and then right in the middle because I wanted these side pieces of my doll box to be a 10 inch panel and so I was just going to cut the pieces of foam board directly in half so I got my markings made and then I just took a yardstick and I marked it right straight down the middle with a pencil and then I took a razor blade you can use a utility knife but I took a razor blade and I just cut down the exact where my line was and cut these pieces of foam board in the middle. I did the same thing for the front panels of the Barbie box that I did for the side panels. I just glued the three pieces together because I cut three pieces of the foam board and I just glued those three pieces together and then I ran a bead of glue on the seam and then I secured it really good with about four rows of the masking tape. I did two panels for either side of the doll box and then I did two panels of this side of the box. But I only showed how I did one panel a piece because that just this is going to be a longer video anyway and I've tried to speed it up and make it as short as possible but you really only need to see one one panel and then just duplicate it just times it by two. When I started my project I had my glue, hot glue gun set on the high temp setting and I noticed it was bubbling up on the foam board a little bit more than what I was comfortable with so I did take that down to the low temp setting and everything bonded just beautifully and it didn't melt the foam board quite as much as the high temp setting did and so I just that was a little boo-boo on my part initially when I started this and then you could really cut your steps out by using even duct tape if you had some lighter colored duct tape I only had black um, that I felt like would show through and wasn't going to work but a wider tape would probably make this a lot faster and a lot less tedious and I put four rows of the masking tape on the top and the bottom but either the packing tape or the duct tape would probably cut down on time and it would save a lot of <laughs> effort on this but I'm just working with what I had at the time so anyway the masking tape worked it worked really well it was just a little bit time consuming for the header piece of the Barbie box I measured 16 inches down and then I made a mark on either end one in the middle took my handy dandy little yardstick and then I drew my line and I picked up the utility knife and I cut that piece. For my Barbie letters I went on Clip Art Library. I get a lot of free clip art off of that site and I found a Barbie logo that I liked and I positioned it on my page one letter at a time, blew it up, 
and then I printed off each letter and then I laid it all out the way that I wanted it and then I cut the letters out and I put it on a piece of poster board. I used an Elmer's glue stick and I glued this onto the poster board. I try to show you crafts that you can do if you do not have a Cricut and you do not even need a color printer for this project. If you are great with freehand, then go for it. I'm just not great at freehand. I don't draw well. And so I just used my color printer to do this. You could even find a logo that you wanted and blow it up in black and white. And you could use carbon paper and trace it out on a piece of poster board. There are several ways that you could do this. Um, I did it with the color printer and printed out each letter and then um, cut it out with scissors and then I glued it onto a piece of poster board. And that's how I chose to do it, but there are so many different ways that you could do this and it's not really all that complicated, but if you have a Cricut and you want to do it that way, that would be amazing as well. But either way, you could just put the Barbie lettering on a piece of poster board and then you can apply it to your box. I also found a cute hot pink star that I thought went with the Barbie theme and motif. And so I went ahead and put that and on on my poster board and then I'm just going to, once I have my letters all glued on there with the Elmer's glue, I'm just going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut around the whole thing. That way when I go to glue it onto the Barbie box, it's got a little white, pink, white. It's got a little dimension. It's got a little um, eye-catching color with the pink and white and it also has some stability and it's going to you know give it a little bit of strength and it won't be so wobbly and then i'm not just applying each letter one at a time onto um, a piece of paper so i thought this was going to turn out really cute doing it this way but this is how far I have gotten today. I have got the two panels made and I have got, and they are very good sized panels, and then I've got the two side panels for the front of the box made. And I cut the top header piece, which will be 16 inches, and the top of the box and then the bottom of the box, which I will measure at a later time. And then I went ahead and did the logo that goes on the very bottom of the box. So what I have left to do will be to put the paper around all of this and to put it all together. I have got a two pack. It's three and a half by 9.8 foot. It's a glitter backdrop that I'm actually gonna put on the wall behind the box. It's going to be a three-sided box so that if you are handicapped or wheelchair, it'll be wheelchair accessible and it won't be an actual something that you have to step over into. You can just walk around behind it and pose inside the box. So we will continue on this adventure tomorrow when I have a little bit more time to get back into it. It is the next day and I have my fuchsia wrapping paper and i also have tanya my girl joining me she offered to help me 
with the second leg of this project because this wrapping paper is just all over the place. And I really did not feel like crawling around on the floor, so we chose to do it on the table and that kind of made it a little bit more complicated. So we laid the wrapping paper on the table and then laid the panel on top of the wrapping paper and then just hot glued, just ran a strip of hot glue and just folded the paper up around the side. And I did not choose to fold the bottoms because I did not want anything to be lumpy on the bottoms. I wanted a nice, smooth, clean finish around the edges. And I was afraid if I did any more folding on the bottoms and the tops that it would be lumpy and just kind of ugly. And I didn't want that. So we just folded it around the edges and then we trimmed off any excess that was on the bottom and just kind of ran a little bit of hot glue and made sure everything was nice and secure. So for the side panels, we decided to use tablecloths. You can buy tablecloths on Amazon. You can buy them at Dollar Tree and they have every different shade of pink. And so we decided to use tablecloths on the side panels because the focal point will be the front of the box and not the side of the box. And so there is no point in putting a great deal of money into the side of the box because that's not what anyone is going to be interested in. Everybody's going to be focused on the front. And so the wrapping paper can get a little bit pricey and so we decided that the front of the box needed to have the more expensive wrapping paper on the front. And so I was shocked, actually, that this tablecloth, I was afraid when I had this idea that the hot glue would melt the tablecloth and I was going to have a mess and we would end up having to tape it. But I was proven wrong. The hot glue and the tablecloth melted together perfectly. It did not melt this plastic tablecloth at all. It stuck beautifully. It glued like a dream. And I was extremely happy with how this tablecloth came out. And the Barbie box is actually set for a day. And what wrinkles were in the tablecloth kind of like a dress when you hang it out and you let it sit um, and the wrinkles just kind of fold away. I was just kind of shocked at how after just 24 hours of letting the box set upright that the wrinkles have just kind of gone away. And so for the inside of the box, because it will be seen, you know, when you're taking a picture, I wanted the white to be covered but not, you know, completely. It's not going to be a huge problem, but I did want the white to be covered up. We just took another tablecloth and cut it to fit. And I kind of, we laid it out and I glued the edges so that they wouldn't slip and slide around and Tanya cut. And so I glued and Tanya cut and then we just kind of finished off the edges together. Altogether, you would need three tablecloths to finish this project. With the left wrapping paper that we had left over, we folded it around the top, the header of the Barbie box. And we just, once again, did not fold the sides because I did not want anything messy and I did not want a bunch of folded paper and I didn't want any bagging or sagging and I wanted the glue to adhere really nicely. And so for the bottom of the box and for the top of the box, we did not fold the sides in, we just covered it and hot glued it on. And then for the logo, we just hot glued it and just here and there and made sure it was really nice and glued on. If we seen a little piece, piece that was sticking up, then we just hot glued it a little bit more and it went on really good. The poster board is nice and sturdy. And so we decided to start gluing this together. 
I am not going to lie. We were a little nervous about how this was going to work, but we were once again very surprised. We did figure out very quickly that the best way to put this together was to hot glue the piece of foam board with the wrapping paper on it. And so we put wrapping, a bead of hot glue on the wrapping paper side and then Tanya held it together until the hot glue cooled. And we made sure everything was straight and in position before we moved on to the next small piece. And we probably did that in six to eight inch sections all the way down the pieces of foam board. And then when we were finished, we did run a very thick string of hot glue down the seam of the foam board to just give it some extra stability just in case we had missed a seam or a place you know or down the whole thing because you know we were working in small sections the next decision that we had to make was where we wanted the box and how big we wanted the box to be before we glued the header and the foot to, together. So we stood the two pieces on end and there was a lot of discussion and we kind of went round and round and we, you know, stood the pieces up and we moved the, the two pieces back and forth because we were kind of eyeballing it and we both got in the box and we made sure that no matter how big or how small um or a wheelchair or you know those all those issues were resolved before we took our hot glue gun out and we positioned the foot piece together first and we got that in position and be, then we started working on the top but we wanted to make sure that it was exactly the size that we wanted it to be before we put the hot glue to it and made sure that everything was correct. <laughs> so anyway, we tend to discuss things a lot and then we tend to do it. And Tanya offered to get on the chair. We put some hot glue down on either side of the header and then we put it into place and I stood down below and then I made sure that the top pieces were directly even on either side and then Tanya was making sure that everything was you know glued in and everything was straight and we were done everything looks so pretty on this Barbie box we are so tickled to death with it I can't wait for the kids and all of the adult Barbies to come by and get their picture taken in our Barbie box. And it was an absolute delight to make. We had so much fun. And if you are really wanting to bring some fun into your party on a budget, this is the way to do it. I created this channel so that I could show you what I create and what I design for work and for home on a budget. This Barbie box, this doll box is on a total budget. All the Dollar Tree products, you can build this completely with Dollar Tree products. So you can use the ready board from the Dollar Tree. You can use the tablecloth. I mean, who knew? that that would be so amazing on the sides of this box. Wrapping paper, which Dollar Tree always has a great supply of wrapping paper. I mean, it's amazing. And then this right here is a personal preference, the backdrop. Now, closer to time, I will probably take this backdrop and I will layer it because it came in a three pack, as I mentioned before. So I will layer this and make this three thick. And then, but this is just a personal preference. You could put paper on the wall or you could put, you know, even the wrapping paper or you could put a tablecloth 
on the wall behind here and make this backdrop. So you don't necessarily have to have this backdrop. This backdrop actually I got off of Amazon and it was $6.99 for a three pack. So I didn't think it was bad. And for some reason, everybody loves, absolutely loves um, a good backdrop here. So, and a good photo op. So this kind of just jazzed it up and gave it a little bit of sparkle. It's standing alone and it's really cute and I think it's absolutely adorable, but closer to time, just to make it simply fabulous, I do have a balloon garland, a balloon tower that will go on the sides. So it will even look more fabulous the night of Halloween when all of my Barbies come out to get their picture taken in this box. So I am excited. I am so excited for this box and I love that it can be done on a complete and total budget. So if you need this, something just like this for a bridal shower or a birthday party or even a baby shower or like I'm using it for Halloween, I, this can be accomplished in such an, a magnificent way on a magnificent tiny little budget. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so that you know when I've uploaded my next video, give me a thumbs up. And I know this is a different kind of version of my crafting, but I appreciate you sticking around and watching. And thank you so much for watching Crafts, Laughs, and Chaos. If you're going to go see Barbie this weekend, then you have the best time ever. 